all right attendees are growing meaning that uh, the setup is probably working well guys please use the questions section to to tell me if you're able to hear me uh, and see me well i will really appreciate this uh, in the meantime i'm going to open that question section so i'll be able to see if everything is going well loud and clear is what christian uh, says all right great perfect perfect great loud and clear another one from fidelis which is good <laughs> meaning that the setup is working well by the way if you notice guys uh probably you notice this um my sound is a little bit better don't you think I'm, I'm currently with a new microphone that that's why it's like a pro microphone actually this is uh this is the microphone of a friend of mine who is like um uh, you know a famous rapper in the area so he recorded like three albums over here on this little baby <laughs> so it's like a, uh this is a mic with a history which is a great thing, right? No, I don't rap. Don't, don't worry. I don't rap. I do not rap. <laughs> I do webinars and life analysis sessions. It's just the mic. The mic is very pro. So I suppose you are able to hear me very well, which is uh, the purpose of this beautiful microphone that I'm currently using. All right, great. People are joining, which is a great thing. I'm so happy to see this. Um, by the way, I would like to remind you that uh, tomorrow we're also doing a life analysis session in the private trading group. So feel free to attend. <laughs> As you're all members of our academy, you uh, uh, you have access to the private trading group, meaning that uh, you also can attend the life analysis sessions. Also, you're probably noticing that I'm standing. This is because I'm using a stand-up desk since like one month <laughs> and a half maybe yeah so i am standing i'm able like to adjust it uh up and down with a like a with a lever <laughs> so it's like very useful i'm trying to be a little bit more fit uh which is not a bad thing to do each of us <laughs> isn't that correct uh all right so we're doing a, another webinar today uh, this time the topic uh, will cover the stochastic oscillator, but we're going to move uh, uh, on this like in a few more minutes until some more people uh, join. Um, what else do I want to share with you? Uh, yeah, we're working on some features on our website which will be added to uh, to your toolbox on our website. So soon you're going to have access to maybe a couple more features on our website, but I'm going to keep this secret. Uh, until we launch them, but uh, you will probably going to receive all of you. You're going to receive emails about uh, these two features, uh, which is a great thing. That's just to prove that we're not sleeping. We're like constantly working for your user experience, guys. That's the purpose of uh, Forex Bolt, to be honest. All right, great, great. Uh, people are joining. All right, let's see who is here. I see Willie Kong, Graf, Matthew Wong, Christian Chepson, uh, who I'm telling that I'm, I do not rap. <laughs> I have friends who rap, but I do not rap. I'm using their mics, take a look. Pro mic with a filter. <laughs> uh, great, uh, Jan, Jesu uh, Femi Ayola, Jan Razenhorn, Fidelis Derrera, hi to all of you guys i'm very happy to see you on this uh, webinar session uh my name is damian from forexboat.com and i am uh, from bulgaria currently located in sofia the capital of bulgaria yeah exactly that's the country and the city uh that was holding the european union presidency uh, in the past few months so we got like pretty famous a lot of stuff happened here uh, related to the geopolitics of uh, the European Union, the 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 continent Europe, as well as the Balkans, you know, because we're playing a crucial role uh, in some negotiation processes for the like integrating the Western ba Balkans in the European Union. Eventually, the country of uh, Macedonia, who actually are trying to change their name to from uh, Furom, which means former Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia, to change it to Northern Macedonia because their name was an obstacle for joining the European Union because Greece will never like accept their name because Greece have like a hist historic like uh, uh, 
mm, what's the word for this uh they have like uh let me just translate this because i'm not sure what is the word of this um uh, yeah they have a historic claims on that name um which uh, macedonia was holding so that now they agreed on northern macedonia the problem is that the you know the citizens of of greece and the citizens of macedonia are, are, do not agree with this <laughs> uh, no matter that the politicians agreed also as far as i know the president of macedonia do not does not agree with this name too so nobody knows what's going to happen but it's like uh you know an interesting uh, occurrence in macedonia also bulgaria is trying to help other countries to join the european union like serbia eventually albania and stuff but we should not forget that like 18 years ago there was a war over there so it will take time until europe accept these countries uh what else uh, hmm yeah turkey was in a, a bit of a harsh tone with the european union but we they created like a big big meeting in varna which is uh, again bulgaria uh varna is actually my hometown so the president erdogan was, came like to varna escorted by his like guards and stuff uh and he met with all the top people in the european union which kind of cooled down the you know the relationship between uh the european union and turkey so these are like the most recent stuff <laughs> that happened in bulgaria according to politics actually this stuff are actually very hot uh for the whole european union so I assume it's an it's an interesting data for you. All right, guys. So now what I'm going to do is to turn off my camera. That's my magic trick. You know, I simply like wave my hand and I am disappearing for your screen. There you go. Whoop. And I'm gone. And now you're only left with my voice. Uh, and I suggest that we proceed uh, with this webinar. However, first I would like to ask you uh, to go through our disclaimer, to spend a minute to read our disclaimer. Uh, which tells that Forex Bolt PTY Limited is a fully regulated company, uh, financially and legally, and we hold a, we hold um, uh, a, a license to give general advice, general advice license. Uh, so everything you're going to hear in this webinar is a pure general advice. We're simply like uh, observing and overviewing uh, an indicator, how it works in Forex trading and stuff totally normal and general stuff all right in the meantime i assume more people are going to join to this webinar all right also during the webinar session i would like to encourage you all the time to ask questions to use the chat uh to use the chat the question section to ask questions i would love to answer each of your questions guys also also at the end of the webinar there's going to be questions and answers section so uh you have chance to like to ask even more questions which is actually the purpose of this webinar the other thing that i want to tell you is that this webinar is being recorded so it is going to get uploaded at our website probably tomorrow i assume or latest monday but i assume it's going to be tomorrow uh the webinar is going to be uploaded to our webinar database and it's going to stay at your disposal constantly on our website so you can simply go to www.forexbolt.com slash webinars and watch all the webinars on record if you're under the trader membership plans. I would like to remind you that the student members, they don't have access to the, to the webinar database. All right, let's move on. So what is the webinar about? As I said, it is about the stochastic oscillator and I named it stochastic oscillator or how to be one step ahead. One step ahead of what? One step ahead of the market. That's the important thing. Why so? You're going to see this in this webinar uh, session. So let me bring you the plan of the webinar. So first, we're going to start with explaining the market momentum and how is it working. Then we're going to move to what is the stochastic oscillator uh, and eventually how is applied in Forex trading. We're going to go through some brief uh, history data about who created the stochastic oscillator, uh when it was created how it was created and so on and so forth uh then we're going to move to the structure of this indicator the parameters that it takes into consideration as well as some of its uh, default values we're going to go through the calculation 
of the stochastic oscillator. So I'm going to explain you the formula of the stochastic oscillator. How is the stochastic line calculated? Uh, then I'm going to speak about, you know, a, a bit of if it's like slowed down the stochastic oscillator. Then I'm going to speak about the smoothing of the stochastic oscillator, some standard stuff. Uh, then I'm going to discuss the signals of the stochastic oscillator. Also, if you have any questions, again, all the time, I would like to, you know, to encourage you to participate using the question section. Uh, notice that I'm saying this during the stochastic indicator signals because I believe this is the most important part of the webinar, which guys you will be more interested uh, in. Then we're going to go to some trading strategies. I'm going to show some combinations, uh, how to use the stochastic oscillator with the help maybe of another indicator. Uh, then uh, we're going to do some practical examples and the webinar is going to end with the questions and answers uh, session uh, as we usually do. Again, I repeat, do not hesitate to participate with questions all the time during the webinar. All right, so what are we starting with first? As you see in the plan of the webinar, we're starting first with market momentum. What is market momentum? So the market momentum is the intensity of a movement of a financial asset. So notice that I formulated this myself, uh, but I believe it describes the market momentum in a very good way, meaning that uh, the market momentum measures like how fast the price of a financial asset is moving in a certain direction, bearish or bullish. So high momentum means that uh, the price of the asset is likely to move sharply in the direction that is measured by the trend. So what could that, that direction be? Well, for this reason, you need to keep an eye on the trend direction. So a bullish trend plus high market momentum is likely to bring a sharp bullish move. Right on the contrary, a bearish trend plus high momentum is likely to bring sharp bearish move. Notice that sometimes there might be a lack of a trend. <laughs> there might be no trend because, uh, you know, in most of the times, as you guys probably know, in most of the time, Forex pairs are like consolidating and not trading. I, I assume this was around 70% of the time. In the other 30% of the time, Forex pairs are trending. So notice that high momentum is also likely to, bring, to, to appear uh, when there is an absence of a trend, which makes it a bit hard to predict which is the direction uh, of the sharp move that we're expecting. So in these cases, maybe it might be better if we use something else to help us predict the direction of the asset. All right, now let's move to the stochastic oscillator. So what is a stochastic oscillator? So the stochastic oscillator is an indicator that measures the price momentum and the strength of a trend. Right, what I was, what I was talking about, the price momentum, the strength of a trend as well. It is, it is important to know that the stochastic oscillator is a leading indicator, which means that uh, since most indicators in Forex trading are like divided in leading and lagging indicator, leading indicators like the stochastic, they bring the signal uh, before the event has actually occurred on the chart. So that's a leading indicator. Lagging indicators, on the contrary, they bring the signal after uh, the event uh, has actually happened on the chart. So lagging indicators are also called trend confirming indicators. Lagging indicator is a, a simple moving average maybe. The more period it takes into consideration, the more lag it has. So the stochastic oscillator is not like these indicators. Stochastic oscillator has the ability to show us the signal actually before the event has happened on the chart. What is the advantages and the disadvantages of the leading indicator? First, the, the advantages of a leading indicator like the stochastic oscillator is that it first it shows us the signal before the event has actually happened on the chart which can put us with an early entry on the chart early entry means that you can catch the whole trend like uh with a signal from the stochastic oscillator while the lagging indicator will first wait for the trend to emerge like say one third of the trend or half of the trend or maybe sometimes 70 percent of the trend and then you can hop in on a signal from a lagging indicator. The leading indicator works the opposite way. It gives you the signal before that, before the, the trend has emerged or the move has happened. So you're able to catch like most of it. However, the big disadvantage 
of the leading indicator is that they give a lot of error. <laughs> I mean, not error, but a lot of false signals. So leading indicators give you an early entry, but many, many false signals. Lagging indicators, they give you an, like a um, late entry. However, signals are like more uh, reliable, which is the reason why they're called like trend confirming. Leading indicators, they're not that reliable. And most of the leading indicators, they cannot exist as a standalone tool. So the stochastic oscillator is also good for finding turning points on the chart, which is something I'm going to speak about. And the thing that I already mentioned is that the stochastic oscillator is not, I repeat, it is not a good standalone tool. So if you want to like, uh, you know, simply follow, if you want to follow simply signals of the stochastic oscillator and nothing else, then you're very, very likely to fail because a lot of the signals from the stochastic oscillator are false. It's like very dynamic and like crazy indicator going up and down, up and down, up and down. You're going to see this. There you go. This is how it looks like. Fluctuates between two levels. Couple lines fluctuating between two levels. This is how the stochastic oscillator looks like. So now let's move to the brief history of the stochastic oscillator. So the first thing that I want to mention is uh, that the creator of the stochastic oscillator are Dr. George Lane and others. Why do I say and others? These others are actually future traders and analysts. Why do I say and others? I say and others because uh, as far as I know, the research that I did says that Dr. George Lane tried like to claim or claim like ownership to be like the creator of this indicator. But in fact, he was uh, uh, he did it with a team of other people. Uh, however, the, the bad thing is that these people like remained nameless and this is the only person that we can relate to the stochastic oscillator. But uh, the thing is that he did not create it himself. He was uh, like part of a team. So a team created that indicator. Uh, the other thing that I want to show is that the methodology of the K and the D uh, like values of the stochastic oscillator was first described in 1957. And the other thing is that after this methodology, the indicator was created in the late 1950s. Uh, I'm not sure about the exact year because I did not manage to find any information about the exact year, but it says the late 1950s. It might be the same year as the like the, the like the discovery of the methodology, or it might be a bit later. You never know. But uh, I mean, if I'm following the logic, first it should come the methodology and then the creation of the indicator that takes into consideration some parameters and so on and so forth. And now I would like to show you a quote uh, of uh, Mr. Dr. George Lane, which might help you understand market momentum in a better way. So this is what he says. Stochastic measures the momentum of price. If you visualize a rocket going up in the air, before it can turn down, it must slow down. Momentum always changes direction before price. What does this mean? So imagine a rocket shooting up in the sky. However, if the rocket turns off the engine before actually going out of space, it will first slow down and then fall, which kind of illustrates the intensity of prices because how trend, how do trend acts? Uh, how do trend trends act they first like emerge they increase for example if it's a bullish trend price increases increases then the price gradually slows down eventually turns horizontal and then the price changes its direction very rarely you will see like a, a big big trend and then suddenly the price to change its direction first we're seeing a slowdown which is exactly what dr george lane is actually explaining with the like the slowing down rocket before it changes its direction this is exactly how the the momentum uh, how momentum works we say that a trend emerges then it gets exhausted and then the price changes its direction meaning like the trend emerges during like a high momentum then momentum slows down and you know and price changes its direction now let's discuss the structure of the stochastic oscillator so the stochastic oscillator shows the location of the close price level, sorry, relative to the high-low range over a certain period, certain periods on the chart. 
So what does this mean? It means that the stochastic oscillator creates a ratio between the close price of a financial asset relative to the high-low range, like uh, having into consideration our respective periods on the chart. I mean, when we talk about periods, it's like about every indicator. If you program it to take periods into consideration, it's going to take periods uh, into consideration. But the most important thing here is to remember, like uh, the terms close price and relative to the high low. So that's the important thing which is applicable for the stochastic oscillator. So the indicator consists of two lines. This is the K line and the D line. And here they are, the K line and the D line. Well, uh, notice that this is like a screenshot from my MetaTrader 4 platform. So this is how the indicator appears with the K line and the D line that is dotted. They are usually blue and red. Uh, and also the default parameters of the stochastic oscillator are 14, 3, 3. So what does this mean? 14 are the periods that are like the look back periods, meaning that the periods that you're going to use for your indicator to look back in the time when it calculates uh, its value. Then the first three period is the slowing of the indicator, if there is any, because you can like uh, fast it up, the indicator, you can also slow it up. And by default, it comes like uh, with a slowing uh, of three periods smoothing. And then the other three means another smoothing, uh, which is like the red line. But this is something that you're going to learn in the next slide when I am talking about the calculation of the stochastic oscillator. Let's move on. So how are we calculating this indicator? So the most important thing is to start with the K line, which is uh, the one that is marked by the blue arrow on the previous slide. Uh, on the, uh, not the previous, but the one. Yeah, actually the previous slide was this. So the K line, the blue line, it equals to, take a look at this, current close minus lowest close. The result of this, you divide it by the highest high minus the lowest low. Multiply all of this by 100 and this is for the respective period that is taken into consideration uh also notice that this is a standard k uh, k line if there is a smoothing or a slowdown you should be taking it into consideration and adding it uh to this uh formula if there is any so and then the d line is a three period simple moving average of the k line so basically the k line is the stochastic line and the d line is a simple just a standard three period simple moving average by default so that's what it is this is why the red line uh was uh, lagging behind the blue line that they create crossovers the reason for this is that it's simply a three period simple moving average nothing more notice that i placed some stars during the for uh at the formula a star at the lowest low a couple stars at the highest high and three stars on 100 and now i'm going to explain each of these three things one by one first I would like to tell you what is the lowest low. Lowest low is the lowest point of the respective look back period. So if you're taking a certain period or a certain, that is like marked by a certain candlestick on the chart, the lowest point of it usually located at the lowest candlestick if there is any, because sometimes there is no low candlestick, you know, if the candle is, uh, for example, Maribozu candle or whatever, there is no low candlestick. But the lowest point, uh, uh, the lowest low of a period is the lowest point of the look back period. Then highest high is exactly the same thing, but opposite. Highest high is the highest point of the look back period. Same. It, most of the cases is the upper candle wick of a respective period on the chart. And then the 100, I would like to explain to you why are we multiplying by 100. So the multiplication of the key of the K <laughs> by 100 is made to move the decimal points with like a uh, with two signs. This is the purpose of the 100. Otherwise, we were going to receive like a like a big number, you know. So that's why they're multiplying by 100. So, what am I going to tell you next about the stochastic uh, oscillator? Yeah, we're going to discuss some signals of the stochastic oscillator. In the meantime, again, I would like to encourage you. If you have any questions, guys, or you want to bring something, feel free to do it. As I would love to, I would love to. Uh, I would love to answer your questions. Now, let's do some signals of the stochastic oscillator. 
the first signal that comes with the stochastic oscillator is the high bullish momentum this is when we get uh we get like the couple lines to be above the 80 level because usually if you remember let me let me get back by the way uh, because i want to show you something take a look yeah we have the two lines that fluctuate between two levels so the up le the upper level is the 80 level and the the lower level is the 20 level so basically the two lines fluctuate between 100 and zero where signals are taken above 80 and below 20. so about the signals of the stochastic oscillator it is very important uh, to know something because uh, in the internet you're going to find a lot of controversial information a lot of people are saying that the stochastic oscillator is simply like for for identifying overbought and oversold conditions other people are saying that's totally not true you know the stochastic oscillator has nothing to do with this the stochastic oscillator is about uh like uh analyzing market momentum and not about overbought or oversold conditions this is what other people say but in fact what i like uh, i like to believe in is that the stochastic oscillator is very good for both of these things for both identifying overbought and oversold conditions meaning that identifying turning points on the chart and at the same time the stochastic oscillator is also very good uh, for like uh, yeah, for identifying very, very high and low momentum on the chart, like combining it like with a with a trend or something. Uh, so high bullish momentum is considered when the stochastic oscillator lines are above the 80 level. High bearish momentum is considered when same lines are below the 20 level. So in first case, the two lines are in the upper part of the indicator. In the second case, the two lines are in the lower part of the indicator indicator so when the 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 indicator is above 80 this is like a high bullish momentum when it's below 20 this is low bullish momentum then another signal overbought signal notice that this time I, i'm not simply saying overbought signal i say overbought plus confirmation for turning points in brackets why am i mentioning confirmation and turning points the reason for this is that in my opinion like uh whenever the momentum is like very 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 high there is also a speculation about uh, overbought market condition however the overbought condition does not come simply like you know uh, price has high momentum or it's overbought in order to be able to identify the overbought condition you first need the turning point at the indicator so in order to identify overbought condition in my opinion you would need to get a confirmation for this i mean when the price goes above 80 this is simply in my opinion it's not enough to to identify an overbought condition and uh, for this reason i believe you need a confirmation so it's absolutely the same about the oversold condition you first need a confirmation which will help you identify that turning point so in the overbought condition say the price goes above 80 and then it simply exits the 80 area which creates some kind of a turning point on the indicator which is very likely to be matching with the turning point on the chart i, I hope you're getting this <laughs> uh, i mean it might sound a bit confusing but what i'm trying to say is that the confirmation comes when the price exits the, the respective level so if it's in the above 80 and then it exits the the above 80 level uh the above 80 zone then this will give you a confirmation uh about uh, that we eventually had an overbought condition which is the reason why the direction is changing and this is very likely to also reflect the price action and to create eventually a turning point on the chart it's same it is same about the oversold condition plus confirmation so the oversold condition i mean the, the high bearish momentum comes when the price goes below 20 but in my opinion to confirm an oversold condition that's not enough because in order to confirm the oversold condition we will need to see the price exiting that that zone below the 20 level which will bring us the confirmation that the price was you know oversold and it is currently maybe 
changing its direction by creating a turning point on the chart. That's maybe a bit confusing. So guys, if you have any questions, feel free to, to, to tell me. I would, love to, I would love to answer. The next signal that I wanted to discuss is the K line crosses. So the K line, as I said, is a stochastic line. The D line is simply a three period simple moving average of the K line, meaning that the D line is lagging by three periods from the K line. K line. This is the reason why the K line constantly breaks uh, the D line, crosses it, it creates crossovers. And K line crosses, although this is like totally not a re reliable signal in my opinion, but it could be used in combination with many, many, many other tools. Uh, like each K line cross, meaning that the K line is breaking uh, the three period simple moving average, the blue line is breaking the red line. Each of these crosses is actually uh, uh, like giving a respective signal. What do I mean by saying giving a respective signal? Uh, I mean that, you know, when we have a bullish crossover, meaning that the K line is breaking the D line in bullish direction, this is considered a bullish signal. When we have a bearish crossover, it happens exactly the opposite thing. This is considered a bearish uh, signal. So basically, this is how they work. The, the crossovers of the K line. If you have any questions, guys, feel free to ask. I would love to answer. All right. All right, let's move on to the other signals. Uh, actually, it is very uh, important to know that the stochastic oscillator is very, very good indicator to discover divergence on the chart. And this is both bearish and bullish divergence. And uh, when I say good indicator, I really mean it because when you combine it well with another indicator, this could be a, like a very, very power, powerful signal. So bearish and bullish divergence, how do we discover this? So we have a bearish divergence, basically, when the tops of the price action are increasing. However, at the same time, we have the tops of the stochastic oscillator, which are decreasing. This is considered a bearish divergence. And the bullish divergence is exactly the opposite thing. When the bottoms of the price action are decreasing, and at the same time, the bottoms of the stochastic oscillator are increasing, then we have a bullish divergence on the chart so this is like a very very important to know and maybe you've noticed during the light analysis session that i am uh, you know sometimes i add up a, a macd indicator and the stochastic uh, uh, oscillator uh not that i believe that they're like the best combination ever actually i'm not even going to give an example with these two exact indicators i'm using in the life analysis sessions the macd indicator and the stochastic because Honestly, they, they give like very, very different signals. And I would like to create like a different perspective from each of the indicators view. And not because I'm trying to match signals and to create some kind of an awesome strategy for you. Life analysis sessions are actually just for observation to discuss the current states of a Forex pair and eventually to discover some, you know, good, maybe tradable opportunity. Maybe you can discover it. I'm simply like uh, providing factual information. So, yeah, bearish and bullish divergence with the stochastic oscillator. Notice that there are like many other indicators that could be used same way. Maybe like the MACD that I already mentioned, also the RSI indicator. So basically, this is how it works. Totally standard way. Bearish divergence and bullish divergence. The, the idea of the divergence is basically to, to discover discrepancies between price action and the indicator, which is uh, likely to cause some kind of a you know, some kind of a price squeeze, which could be like, which could like burst out in a certain direction when you have a bearish divergence in, in bearish diver, in bearish direction, when you have a bullish divergence, respectively in bullish, in bullish direction. So now I'm going to pop up my chart uh, and I'm, I'm going to just try to discover some of these signals for you. In the meantime, guys, if you would like, simply use the question section to tell me which Forex pair you would like me to switch my chart to so i would uh, like approach that exact forex pair for you because when i'm like when i'm approaching uh, signals of an indicator 
uh, I am simply like adding a random chart because uh, I would like you to suggest that for experts. So you will see that I, I did not like preliminarily, you know, like made up some signals, you know, in advance. I'm simp I was simply going to scroll through a chart uh, and I'm going to show you how this stuff works. All right. So Alien said, uh, hi, I would like United States dollar, Japanese yen, thanks. All right, coming for you, man. There you go. Now you're supposed to see uh, my chart. However, since it's like very crazy over here uh, from the life analysis session, I'm, I will simply open a clean, uh, I'm gonna open a clean Japanese yen chart. There you go. And I'm going to add, uh, huh. There you go. I am going to add uh, my template and the stochastic uh, oscillator. There you go. Uh, did you see this, by the way, when you go to properties? There you go. Periods, 14 for the K line, uh, for the smoothing of the D line tree periods and the slowing tree periods, which is where 1433 comes from. All right, so let's try to find some some signals over here. Uh, you know, standard overbought, oversold signals. First thing that I see. Uh, there you go. The stochastic enters the overbought zone, price decreases. Then it enters the oversold zone, price increases. Then it enters the oversold zone, zone again, price increases even harder. By the way, notice that you can use the stochastic to discover some patterns as well. Take a look. This is a double bottom pattern. And since it got confirmed, it gave even stronger signal, which was the reason maybe to, to, to burst the price up like that, you know, compared to the other move, this was like a relatively big move. Take a look. Then the price got overbought again over here. I mean, notice that I'm saying overbought when I see, you know, that the, the stochastic oscillator going in the overbought zone and then exiting down through the 80 level. So basically the confirmation of the overbought signal comes with this candle over here, which leads to that decrease over there. Uh, otherwise, when the price goes up, it simply shows high momentum. Let me delete these. I would like to show you a condition where the price enters the oversold zone and eventually stays there for, for a while. Uh, But as I as I told you already, I mean the stochastic uh, oscillator is not a very very good like a standalone tool. So there are many errors as well. So take a look at this. Uh, for example, you have the price going into the oversold zone, uh, the stochastic going into the overbought zone, and then the price goes out of the over overbought zone, which confirms eventual overbought condition. However, the decrease is like very small, and it's just likely to bring you with a losing trade, which is not a good thing. Then going in the overbought zone again then again and again here and here which are like only fake outs this is a fake signal this is uh then the price went back uh when it went back you know the momentum increase take a look at this two big bullish candles indicating big, big bullish momentum then simply stochastic oscillator changes direction broke the overbought zone which confirmed the previous overbought signal and simply the price started decreasing I see Willie Kong saying, oh, no. <laughs> so what do you mean by, oh, 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 there was a euro dollar request uh, before that from Christian Jepson. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to approach the euro dollar after I, I'm done with the uh, <laughs> with the American dollar Japanese. Yen. Sorry about that. I, I saw the other comment first. So, all right uh what else about uh yeah i, I want to show you like uh, some high momentum take a look at this price going in the oversold zone but like very slightly touching it then the price increases and then the price goes back in the oversold zone creating that big piece of decrease over here which indicates you know the increase in the momentum which stays up to over here then when the price breaks the oversold zone in bullish direction it simply like starts notice that the 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 stochastic oscillator starts fluctuating which kind of reminds of a slowdown you know slowdown of the momentum then the price simply breaks 
the 20 level in bullish direction, which gives a bullish signal. There is a slight decrease. Well, here it is over there. <laughs> I mean, not that big. Then the price touches the oversold zone, another fake signal. Uh, same happened in the uh, Jan uh, race horn says, same happened in the up move before stochastic stays above 70. Uh, can you please uh, explain what, what you meant? So 80 does not mean overbought in general. Exactly. This is what I was trying to say. 80 does not mean overbought. It means high momentum. I mean, you can identify like past overbought condition when <laughs> when actually the price exits that area. That's my point. Because a lot of people say, you know, this is on, on like... A, 80 to 100 level is an, you know, it's an overbought zone. I mean, people, I personally call it an overbought zone as well because it's like from from shorter. I need to name it somehow. Maybe it, it is better to say like the 80 zone or end the 20 zone. But basically, that's what it is. It's it does not mean that the price is overbought when the uh, when the stochastic is above 80. It means that the bullish momentum is very high and then if the price breaks the 80 level downward meaning that exits that zone this means that this was very likely to be an overbought condition and the price is currently creating a turning point on the chart this is basically how it works uh now i'm gonna try to discover a divergence for you uh, <laughs> mm, i was thinking about this one but not exactly no looking at it looking at it i'm gonna find one real quick aha here it is so that is uh that is a divergence that is a, a bullish divergence here and here i'm gonna mark it take a look so the price action generally shows a very strong decrease take a look the two bottoms are generally decreasing however the two bottoms of the stochastic are kind of increasing this is how the bullish divergence work take a look price decreases stochastic increases as a result price bursts in bullish direction creating like entering even a bullish trend and take a look at this uh here we got an indication that the momentum was very high here we got a fake signal that the price might have been overbought. However, then the price, uh, the stochastic simply entered the over the 80 zone again, initiating uh, like signalizing for even higher momentum. As a result of this, the price increased even higher. This is how it works. Uh, let's see if I'm able to find another signal, maybe a bearish divergence. Mm hmm here it is price increases tops are bullish however at the same time we have the stochastic where the tops are bearish so this is a bearish divergence take a look tops are bullish stochastic tops are bearish as a result we get this big price drop and furthermore i would like to show you that in combination to this we got you know we have the divergence we have the divergence and at the same time at the time of the bounce because this could be taken as a you know like a line a trending line eventually through the tops of the price action when the price bounces again from that line for fourth time at the same time it bounces from the line that i'm using for the stochastic and at the same time it touched the 80 level zone and bounced in bearish direction so this could be considered first as a trend bounce of the price action second as a trend bounce of the stochastic indicator, third, as entering and exiting the 80 level, which is considered a bit overbought, and fourth, we have a bearish divergence. So these are like four signals at once that we get from the from the stochastic and the price action. As a result of this, the price creates that decent drop of uh, how many pips are that? Uh, like 43, 45 pips. Basically, this is how the stochastic oscillator signals work. And now I'm going to pop up my chart again. Now I would like to describe to you some trading strategies that are common for the stochastic oscillator, some of them that you can use, and of course, to tell you uh, which are my preferences. All right, here they are, trading strategies. 
the first one, and actually the one that I like a lot, is combining the stochastic oscillator with Bollinger bands. A lot of people might say, hey, this sounds very odd, you know, and very, uh, you know, strange. And that is true. However, I believe that the momentum and volatility go hand by hand. And since the Bollinger band indicator is a volatility based indicator and the stochastic indicator measures momentum, I believe these two are a nice combination. The next one is the stochastic oscillator plus a moving average. The purpose of this one is to uh, simply discover eventual overbought and oversold conditions and at the same time uh, to match these overbought and oversold conditions and the respective exit from the respective area with a bounce from a moving average. This could be a simple moving average, an exponential moving average, uh, maybe some kind of smoothed moving average or maybe some moving average that is displaced by certain periods you know whatever you want you whatever you want to use if you find the moving average that is like going well with a certain forex pair then maybe you can combine that moving average with a stochastic oscillator and try to find some turning points uh on the chart when the price exits one of the zones giving you a, the respective signal this might be matched with a bounce from a support or a resistance level in the face of the moving average and the third one is, this is like a very, very simple one. I'm not saying that it's just like very good, but it's a very, very simple and easy to understand. Stochastic oscillator and the RSI. These are like two indicators that work pretty similar, <laughs> you know, uh, not pretty similar, but uh, like the RSI could also be used to identify overbought and oversold conditions. And the idea is to match signals from the stochastic and the RSI indicator. When both indicators are giving you an overbought signal, then this might be used, you know, to, to short a certain forex pair. When both indicators are giving you an oversold signal, then this might be taken as a signal to go along with a certain forex pair. So that's the idea. So let's repeat these again. Stochastic and Bollinger bands to combine momentum and volatility. What does this mean? When uh, there is a high bullish momentum, say, you know, uh, the stochastic uh, indicator is going to start hitting like the, the the 80 level zone you know entering the 80 level zone and above it at the same time if volatility is high the bollinger bands are going to you know expand and at the same time you will see that the price is increasing this will give you like a nice indication that there might be an emerging trend on a high volatility and high bullish momentum which might put you with a very you know good trade where you catch a big big bullish move it works absolutely the same way in the opposite direction. Stochastic oscillator and moving average, simple moving average or exponential moving average or other moving average, whatever you want. The, the idea is to uh, identify overbought and oversold conditions of the stochastic oscillator and at the same time to match these conditions with the price bouncing from a moving average, testing it as a support or as a resistance. The idea of this is to find turning points on the chart and the price's unavailability, unability, disability, actually, the price's disability to break a certain level. And the third one is simply to match overbought and oversold conditions with the stochastic and the RSI indicator. And now I'm going to go through each of these three on my chart. And I'm going to start first with the euro dollar, which was suggested by Christian. All right uh let me open the market watch again to get a uh to get a to get a clean chart there you go so now i'm going to open the stochastic and the Bollinger Band indicator. Uh, here it is. Voila. Well, notice that I marked it with red because I like it more like that. Usually it comes, the bands come with green and the whole indicator comes with green. So let's do a 15 minute chart. <laughs> Take a look. What did happen over here? Take a look. Notice that the price like started 
you know, shooting down probably on some economic event. At the same time, the Bollinger Bands expanded. And with this bullish candle, uh, with this bearish candle, take a look at it. This big bearish candle, the stochastic oscillator went straight in the, the 20 level zone over here. Take a look, which indicated a strong bearish momentum. As a result, we got this big bearish move. And this is when, you know, uh, the band started like shrinking first and then the, the stochastic uh, line went out of the 20 level like in a more, uh, you know, certain way because we also had some discrepancies here, but these were like uh, maybe some noises. So this is what happened. The price broke the 20 level here, it slowed down and then it changes direction. At the same time, we got a bullish divergence over here, by the way, I cannot miss that fact. Take a look. The stochastic bottoms are bullish, where the price bottoms are bearish. Take a look. As a result, we have another burst in bullish direction. At the same time, uh, take a look. This is a fake signal over here, but notice that it happens during uh, like tight bands, which totally like uh, contradicts the stochastic signal. So we don't have a signal from the Bollinger Bands here. The, ba the bands get white over here when the stochastic goes back in the above the 80 level, which gives you another high bullish momentum and at the same time high volatility leading to a big bullish trend. So this is how this strategy works. And now guys, I would like to ask you to suggest another Forex pair so I will be able to show you the stochastic uh, oscillator in a combination with a moving average. So feel free to mention another Forex pair. If not, I will simply going to proceed uh, with the euro dollar, which was suggested by suggested by Christian. All right, let's go with the euro dollar again. So now I'm going to close the Bollinger Bands indicator, and I'm going to open uh, a moving average, uh, say 20 period moving average. I'm going to mark it with red because it's like more bright on the chart. And I will try to find some support and resistance levels. Although I don't see like the 20 period moving average to be like very reliable, maybe. Maybe a bigger one. Yeah, let's do a, a bit bigger one. Let's do a 50 period moving average. There you go. Take a look. In few cases, we see that this is a reliable uh, moving average. See, the price tests it here as a resistance and here as a resistance. Um, here, after a breakout, price creates a sharp move in bearish direction. Notice that this breakout comes after the price entering above 80 and then breaking it in bearish direction, which gives the, over, the overbought condition. So this confirmation comes here and eventually with the breakout of the simple moving average, we can simply you know, try to uh, try to catch some some kind of a short move. Then when the price decreases, it goes in the oversold zone. Again, a little noise here, but the, the stochastic is still in the about uh, below the 20 level between 0 and 20, and then uh, which indicates high bearish momentum. Then when the price breaks the 20 level, that momentum kind of ends. Price starts, you know, losing its intensity, its momentum, and that decrease starts becoming like a horizontal move. Uh, then the, the 50 period moving average is tested again as a resistance. Although there are some discrepancies, it got tested as a resistance uh, here, unsuccessfully bounced here, and then uh, it bounced again over here, but we did not, we were not be able to match it with, with uh, with the price entering the 80 level over here so this could not be considered and then again over here the price tested it again then broken in bearish direction entering the the 80 level zone exiting the 80 level zone confirming the oversold signal and there you go a big bearish trend oh i see jen that's saying he needs to leave bye bye uh it was a pleasure for me that you was you were on this webinar and you're gonna see it on record on recording whatever you missed Let's continue now. 
uh let's see if i'm able to find another one like yeah there you go that's a very very bright example take a look so here the 20 the 50 period moving average proves to be uh, like a reliable support resistance uh, feature in some cases take a look price bounces in bearish direction again and again here for third time then the price breaks it starts increasing the price then tests it as a support going below 20 which shows uh, like strong market momentum however the price creates a turning point very quick exiting that level breaking the 20 level and at the same time it creates like a, this small thing then it repeats again however the increase in the second time is a lot bigger take a look exact moment of testing the 50 period moving average matches with when the price is exiting the 020 zone which confirms the previous oversold state and gives us a signal that an increase might appear on the, chart, on the chart. This is how this works. And now let me show you the third one, which is the stochastic in a combination with the RSI indicator, relative strength index indicator. Here it is. Ooh, last time I used like a bigger line. There you go. So the relative strength index indicator has like two zones. They're like 70 and 30. These zones could be changed. You can make them like 80, 20 as with the stochastic, or you can hold them like uh, similar. But take a look at this. Take a look. The price, uh, actually the stochastic is hitting here the 0 20 level and then it exits from that level over here. I mean, it exits here, however, the relative strength index is not doing the same thing. But here it exits that level, creating an oversold signal. At the same time, the exact same thing happens with the RSI. Take a look. It hits the 30 level, enters the 30 level a bit below the 30 level, and then the price increases. As a result, we get that price increase, and uh, this might put us with a nice trade on an emerging bullish trend take a look i'm not saying that you can hold it until forever because uh, you're getting the opposite signal over here take a look here oversold the price breaks it enters the zone then breaks it creating an over overbought signal same thing happens with the rsi as a result we get this small thing over here and then we have more of a consolidation take a look it is an increase but it's more of a sideways move and this is the reason why the RSI is kind of horizontal, which is giving us absolutely no signals. But let's try it again. Here and here, take a look. Exiting the zone and here exiting the zone. As a result, we get a fake out. <laughs> a very small thing. Not good. Uh, let's try again. Uh, one more time here, but the increase is not sufficient again. Let's give it another shot. Yep, take a look. Here, here, exiting the zone here and here, creating that price drop, continued by that price drop. So that might be something. Uh, and this one. Actually, did I approach this one? No, I don't think so. I think I approached the previous one. Yeah, I got this one over here. And th this is a good one. Take a look. Here, touching the 20 zero level. Entering the 20 zero level here again, the below 30 level exiting the zones in bullish direction here and here. As a result, bam, big bullish trend, which even like continued even longer. Let's try it again now. Maybe here. Yeah, this could be taken, although the decrease comes a little bit late, but this entry and exit as well as here shows like a, an overbought condition and the signal comes over here so if you are able to stay in the market until the price starts dropping that could be great because usually when you position your stop loss order it should not be of course like a couple pips it could contain it should contain at least like 15 maybe 20 pips which is kind of strongly above so this is no danger, this fluctuation over here. But as a result, you get this nice drop. Take a look. Let's try to find another one. Ah, there you go. Here and here. Again, same thing. 
stochastic exits the 20 level and the RSI exits the 30 level. As a result, you get this price increase. So this is how you match signals with the stochastic and with the relative strength index. And now, guys, I would like, yeah, these were the practical examples. Sorry, I about forgot to turn on that slide for you. I would like to encourage you to ask me questions if you have any questions regarding this webinar. And in the meantime, while you're thinking about your question, I'm going to activate our poll. Uh huh. And I would like to encourage you to participate in our poll. There you go. I just launched our poll, so you're supposed to, uh, you're like able to vote now for how how are you satisfied from this webinar? And in the meantime, I would like to ask you to think, uh, to think about um, the questions that you have for me, because I would love to answer if something's not clear, because I assume that some of the signals might not be very clear for you. Maybe the formula of the the formula of the stochastic oscillator could not be very clear to you because uh, you're not obligated like to understand it like from the first time, but it happens. So feel free to use the question section to ask questions. If you have any questions, I would love to respond to all of them. That's what I'm here for, right? <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and maybe we can create some kind of a discussion. All right. In the meantime, now I am going to turn off the poll. All right. Poll was closed. And now I am ready to take your questions, guys. All right. Let me check that out. A lot of people voted on the poll. Thank you very much for this, by the way. That's the idea of the poll. <laughs> To vote on it all right in the meantime while i'm waiting for your question i'm going to pop up my chart again i'll try to find some some other signals for you uh christian asks have you made an indicator which combines the three examples you mean the three strategies that i described well um no <laughs> no i haven't uh, actually i've said this many times i'm not that much into programming i'm more of a price action guy and like you know uh, standard indicators guy i personally like you know price action more i tr i like trading like uh, on naked charts and analyzing naked charts i like uh, following trends you know indicating chart patterns especially like harmonic chart patterns also elliot waves such stuff uh but uh, that might be a good idea maybe you can post a question or an idea about this in our private trading group and maybe we can discuss this because uh well, I'm. Mm, let me think of it. I mean, I, I'm a, about programming an indicator. Uh, I can tell you that I cannot do this personally. However, when I'm thinking about that, now let me get back to uh, to the three strategies: combining momentum and volatility. So basically, the Bollinger Bands indicator has like a like a moving average. I think, yeah, the Bollinger Band indicator. I think it has a moving average in the middle. So let's. Uh, uh let's open it. let's let's open that one all right so the bollinger bands indicator yeah has a moving average in the middle take a look so basically this covers a strategy number strategy number two because we have the stochastic we have the moving average we have the bollinger bands indicator so uh and then uh, and then yeah we can simply add the rsi so simply if we leave the chart like that uh i believe we'll have all the parameters that you just mentioned uh however i'm not sure how this could be programmed in a single indicator you know maybe if we overlap the rsi with the stochastic somehow although the areas might be well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can use the same area. The two indicators could be overlapped and simply add the Bollinger Bands indicator, adjust the moving average of the Bollinger Bands as much as you, uh, as the way you want, and this might work. I mean, this is not exactly programming an indicator, but it can, you know, it it contains all the features that you that you mentioned. So Fidelis asks, is there a particular time frame for trade strategies you suggest? 
uh, us to us for the stochastic uh, to be honest smaller time frames or maybe intraday they, they work like uh, they work in my opinion best because since this is about discovering momentum uh i mean momentum is different during different days so maybe it needs to be identified uh separately so maybe time frames up to 15 minutes or 30 minutes these might be good because one hour you know how many one hour candles are in one day 24 on 24 candles might not be enough for a trend you know so maybe 30 minute chart is uh, is big enough in my opinion for the stochastic uh, oscillator and then 15 minute chart basically this indicator is uh, more about discovering like certain conditions of the price and trying to scalp for a particular price move that's the idea of the stochastic oscillator all right guys let's check if there are other questions Yeah, Christian says this is cool. Yeah, it is cool. <laughs> In this, it, it is cool. Uh, but I mean, since three indicators contain like uh, four indicators, because here we have RSI, stochastic, Bollinger Bands, and in the middle of the Bollinger Bands, we have a, a moving average, uh, which uh, how many periods? Yeah, 20 period or yeah, 20 periods. Uh, so I'm not sure how you're going to combine all these parameters in a single indicator because when you say sig single indicator i imagine like three lines most and here these three indicators they give you like six lines <laughs> uh all of them so how are you going to like unify all the information given by these indicators in like two lines or one line or three lines i i don't i'm not exactly sure how this could be done Yeah, well, yeah, with code, that makes sense. But I mean, what? imagine that with code, you're going to represent all these three indicators with one single line. So what is this line is going to give you? What kind of information? I mean, a line can fluctuate, <laughs> can fluctuate on an area and can enter some zones, you know? These zones could be either at the top or at the bottom. I mean, what? I cannot, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, imagine it myself how this could be done. Uh, oh, not a line, but one. Oh, you mean like a, a one indicator? Yeah, that, this could be done. I mean, you can simply like keep these indicators. Actually, I'm not exactly sure if you can, you know, overlap indicators. But yeah, this could be done. This could be done. You can simply keep the, the Bollinger Bands and overlap the the RSI and the stochastic and there you go and, and I believe you're done <laughs> you're done yeah with this yeah this this should work all right guys well if you don't have any other questions uh oh let's see so if you don't have any other questions maybe uh, I can turn on my camera again so you can see my my pretty face one more time. And that's me getting back to you again. All right. Uh, well, I hope, guys, you like this webinar. Also, I'm very grateful that most of you voted on the poll. And I think positively, <laughs> which is a good thing, meaning that these webinars are going in the right direction. Uh, it was a great pleasure for me to conduct this webinar for you. Also, as I already told you, a couple features are coming uh, at our website for you, which will not reflect your payment or whatever. It, they will simply like stay there for you all the time. Uh, and the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that we will going to be launching another giveaway and there are going to be like three winners to this giveaway. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to win some cash for trading as well as uh, some other stuff. So stay tuned for this. You're all going to receive uh, emails uh, about uh, this giveaway. And now I would like to thank you for your attention, for uh, attending these webinars, because it was a great pleasure for me to do it for you. And I, will, I hope that I'm going to see you tomorrow again at the live analysis session. Thank you very much, guys. I am wishing you a great day and see you tomorrow at the live analysis session. Bye-bye.